Whoops. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone, we are live. My name is Zach Freider. We are here at my apartment, but we're doing BX200 Artist Talk with Laura James. We are just waiting for everybody to come in. Welcome everyone. And I see Laura is here and is requesting to join. I'm gonna let Laura in. Hello. You're here. I'm here. You made it. It wasn't so hard. No. The icon topped up. I'm I'm new to this. I know. I'm kind of new to it too. But here we are. We're gonna do our best. Okay. <laughs> Hello in the Bronx. Um. So should I introduce you? Sure. Let me turn up my volume. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, your volume is good. Okay, good. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's go ahead. All right. So um, for everyone, anyone just tuning in, my name is Zach Frader. I am the communications manager at BX200. And today we are having an artist talk with Laura James, who is a Bronx-based, I'm just going to read your little bio right now. Laura James is a Bronx-based self-taught working artist and independent curator. She has been working as an artist for almost 30 years, and she often paints women who are at once strong, majestic, and fragile. And through her work, she adds beauty to what are normally mundane aspects of life. Laura's artwork is inspired in part by the Ethiopian Christian art tradition, and is also in frequent conversation with surrealist painting and post-colonial theory. In addition to painting, James has illustrated sacred texts, as well as two children's books. James is a prolific curator, as well as a mother of three. Today, we are here to talk to Laura about her artwork, as well as her important work in the Bronx creative community as a director and co-founder of BX200. Welcome, welcome, Laura. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, it's, we're here because of you. Okay, let's talk. Yeah, so where are you? So first, where are you calling from? I'm calling from West Farms in the Bronx. West Farms, okay. Yes. And we're just going to ask, every time we do an artist talk, we just want to make sure we know where everyone's calling from. So what, and now I'm going to get into nitty gritty. So who or what inspired you, Laura, to become an artist? Well, it's kind of a weird story. I am... Um, Okay, so I was walking down the street in bed in my neighborhood, and there was a book in the window of a botanica. This book was called Ethiopian Magic Scrolls. And, you know, I had gone to church with my family my whole life. And, um, you, know, you know, we had white Jesus like everybody else. You know, it was very um, unfortunate, odd, to say the least. Uh, you know, and so when I saw this book with these black angels, I was just like, wow, this is fantastic. And I bought the book. I, I started to practice painting in that way. And, and I don't know, the rest is history. I, I didn't, like, set out to be an artist. It just sort of happened, you know. I, um, I don't know. I, I just fell into it. And I kept doing it, you know. What so you... the book inspired me completely. Um, can I ask you a follow-up question? Sure. Um, what did you, what kind of, kept you going or even like made you want to do that because did you have in other words did you have like support from your parents to do that or to do art like how did they use that <laughs> you know? well you know it's kind of funny because my parents they, they're from Antigua and the in the Caribbean and they actually went back to the Caribbean when I was when I was 17 and they left my sister and I in our in the apartment in the house that they owned so you know we didn't have to you know pay rent and we didn't really need to make money so you know you know it was sort of like oh we can't wait till they leave which in in retrospect it wasn't really the best thing to leave like two teenagers you know in, in New York City but um you know, it, it allowed me not to have to be stressed about finding a job, you know, and so I was able to just paint, you know, paint. And very early on, I 
I was um, invited to be in exhibits and, you know, um, and I was able to sell the work. So it made me, you know, feel like I could do this. Also, my parents, they both worked from home all my life. So it's like I never saw them, like, go out to the office or something like that. So I knew that I could do that, you know. Nice. Well, that's really yeah. cool. I was asking because I feel like an artist, being an artist is not always obvious, an obvious choice. Mm -hmm. no, no, it isn't. And like my kids are not allowed, you know, it's like, it's not something that <laughs> it's not something I would necessarily want my kids to do, you know, but, you know, when you fall into it, if it's like, you know, your destiny, I guess it is what it is. Right, absolutely. And you followed your passion. And then when did you, um, when did you make it to the Bronx from bedside? So actually, I guess I've been up here for almost almost well maybe like 18 years already it was quite a while um i like to say i got gentrified out of brooklyn you know it's like when the change started happening um i was we were looking for a bigger place and it was just really kind of prohibitively prohibitively expensive down there and so moving to the bronx we just had more space you know i was um sort of like <laughs> i don't want to say devastated you know, I mean, the Bronx is so far from Brooklyn, and I just knew so many people in Brooklyn. You know, I had been born and raised all my life. You know, I had I had a community there with artists and other people. So I was, like, not very happy to move to the Bronx, to be honest. But I, I definitely have grown to love it, you know. It's a beautiful – it's beautiful. I love it here. What was um, difficult for you about the transition into the Bronx? Well, you know, because I didn't know anybody, you know, I, it was just very isolating, let's say. So that that was probably the biggest thing. It's not because it's the Bronx, you know, I didn't really know some, too much about it. We actually used to go um, uptown a lot because my, my husband was Jamaican. So we used to go like further uptown to the Jamaican neighborhood. And, you know, I'm on 180th now. So it's like sort of mid Bronx. So I wasn't really familiar with the area, but. You know, I live right behind the Bronx Zoo, so I can see like the wild, um, the wild horses. They live across the street when they're not working. You know, and there are peacocks, and you know, there's the garden across the street, the community garden, and there are parks, and it's actually quite, quite nice up here in the Bronx. And I'm a block away from the Bronx River. You know, it's really beautiful over there. Yes. So it, it's really nice. It's kind of sort of like being in the in the city and the country at the same time on the other corner is the subway, you know? So it's um it's actually quite an ideal kind of neighborhood to be in. Definitely, yeah, you have the best of both worlds, basically. Yeah. Um, so would you say that, um, did anything change for you about your work when you moved to the Bronx? Was there anything that like inspired you or like maybe changed the way you were working or anything like that? You know, I mean, I I don't, I, I can't really say, I mean, just off the top of my head, I would really have to think about that. I, I, I work, you know, I do two different kinds of painting. I do religious icons and then I do just like, you know, my own thing, I guess, with women and, you know, painting domestic workers, you know, painting, you know, slavery and slave, um, you know, slave history is like a big thing for me so i i don't know that you know moving to the bronx really changed my um themes or anything like this you know it definitely it's just like i said you know it's very nice hair and you know i have a nice place to work so it's it's very um nurturing in that way that i can feel comfortable to do my work and be happy about it you know and then i can go outside and go to the park or whatever so that's the you know, that's really the thing that I love most about being up here and working here in this neighborhood and in the Bronx that I'm able to like chill out when I need to, like to just take a break and relax, you know, outside. So. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, I've been doing that for myself too. Got to get out. Yeah. Um, so, and so um, how did BX200 come about then? That was after you moved, I assume. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I was already up here for seemed like a long time, at least like eight, nine years. And, um, you know, I, I illustrated this children's book and on the back of the book, it said, she lives in the Bronx. <laughs> and I, I can remember like it was yesterday, I looked out the window and I was like, oh my God, I live in the Bronx, you know, because I never <laughs> went anywhere in the Bronx. I went to the train station across the street, you know? Okay. So, I mean, 
at that time I was like, you know, this is kind of ridiculous. Like I should have some friends in the Bronx, you know, and I'm sure there are artists and, you know, like where are the artists, you know? And I didn't actually know any art. I knew one artist who lived in the Bronx, but then I knew this, this other woman, um, Valerie Larka, who actually lived in New Rochelle. And I asked her if, um, you know, if she would help me to put together a list of artists. Actually, what I really wanted to do was to have a party. You know, I was like, oh, let's have a party. Cause I like to, I like to, I like parties, you know, I like to organize parties and have events and gatherings and things like this, yeah. especially among artists, because, you know, um, that's where you have your best conversations, where you <laughs> figure out projects and, you know, just to be kind of laid back and yes. nobody's like competing with each other. It's not necessarily uh, an exhibit or something, you know, it's just more like chill. So anyway, um, yeah, so she helped me to put together that list of artists. There's actually the Bronx documentary project was going on at the very same time where they, um, it was a book that uh, that two organizations, I guess, put together with artists and photographers taking pictures of, Bronx photographers taking pictures of Bronx artists. So they had a very long list of artists that we were able to use to, um, I'm looking at some of these comments here. Um, yeah. And networking is key. And it really is, you know, it's like a big thing for me. Like, you know, especially because I'm self-taught and I just sort of, you know, went from one thing to the to the next. And you know, living in Brooklyn and just being around these different artists and everything. It's like, you know, just use, I'm sharing resources and helping each other. You know, it's like a big, it's a big thing for me. It has It has worked in my favor, you know, being able to do that, being able to help other people. You know, um, it's it's always kind of weird when people are like, oh, I can't tell you how I did that. And, you know, oh, I can't give you any information and, you know, I can't and, and you know, not sharing. It's just like, you know, that's just not the way it is. You know, it, sharing is very important to me, you know, because people have shared with me. I want to share with other people. I don't know. I don't remember the question. <laughs> did I answer the question? I mean, yeah, you were I was asking how BX200 came about and you were saying, you know, basically. It was yeah. like. Yeah, so we uh Enough. we did the list and then we actually had a great party at the Bronx Museum, our launch party where there were um you know, many of the artists came out and um you know, I guess the rest is history. we 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 um MG <laughs> Did you read some <laughs> comment? Oh, that's Mike. And and you know, it's MG it's so funny. You know, Mike Young, you know, he's the photographer. He, I met him because he was a photographer that was taking pictures with that um, Bronx documentary project. And so, you know, he, he joined the site that way. And I remember, like, um, seeing his work at the Bronx Documentary Center for the first time. And I was able to buy this photograph of his that hangs in my bedroom that I love, you know. And, yeah. and you know, it's just like I, I wouldn't have known any of these people if we hadn't done this project, you know. Right. And, you know, this is like one thing about the Bronx. The Bronx is very big. And there's just like, you know, there's the east side and the west side and uptown and downtown, you know, or, or South Bronx. And there's really not one really main central area for, for art. I guess Mott Haven is trying to do that now. But, you know, there are artists everywhere, you know, and many of these people are working, like myself, working out of their homes, you know, mm -hmm. some people have studios, whatever, but. It, there's just not like a, um, one t one sort of neighborhood or one sort of place that you can go. So it, it was nice to be able to have this um, to have this platform where we could have the art online, but also to have exhibits and to um, to do events and professional development things like this. I worked a lot with Eileen Walsh, who um, you know she saw a little article that that was written about um, the. The X200 when we first launched, and she just like called us up and she's like, "Hey, do you want some help?" And you know, and you know, she's like one of my very best friends now. So I'm really, I'm right. really happy for that too. You know. So anyway, it's all good. Yeah, it takes a village. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing is takes a village. And yeah, it takes a village definitely. Made this definitely. Happen. And continue to make it happen. Um, what was it like when you started? Did people have any? What was the reaction, I guess, from the larger community when you started it? Were people like, why are you doing this? What is the Bronx yeah, artist? I, I think that mostly people were um, pretty happy about it. You know, it was like, 
oh, somebody's just doing like uh, um, something nice, I guess. You know, it's like I didn't, it wasn't like you have to pay to be on it. You know, it is a curated site. So it's not just like you live in the Bronx, you're on the site, you know, it's not like that. But so it's like a thoughtful thing that we're trying to really put our best foot forward, show the best of what we, what we were um, looking at, what we had access to, let's say. Obviously it's not every artist who lives in the Bronx or, or, or even, you know, I don't want to say that, but anyway, um, the reaction was very good. You know, we had quite a few articles written when we first launched. I guess it was just something new. I don't, I don't really think there is a site just like this with a borough, you know, for a borough where it's um, specific and it's curated and where you actually do events and other things. So it's not just an online thing. It's also offline. Yeah. You know, it hasn't been so much offline or well offline during COVID. Right. Um, actually, like right before COVID started, we were doing our third Bronx Now um, biennial. And, you know, we had artists bringing the work. We were doing it at a at a, a beautiful space, a Shoshama space down in the Lower East Side. And we were so excited. <laughs> and then, you know, that very weekend when they were like, ah, the city is closed. We had to, like, artists had to come and get their art. We were just so disappointed. But, you know, we're, we'll do it again. You know, and so anyway, yes. we're, we've Bronx been. Will rise again. It'll rise. It will rise. Bronx now. Eileen and I will definitely be doing that again. So, yeah. Oh yes, I love to hear that. So, um, what I mean that was kind of the next question, but you start you started to talk a little bit about some future plans for BX two hundred. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you want to share? Yeah. Okay. So, you know. Um. Okay. So it's been what. 2014, mm -hmm. I can do the math, it's like six years, something like that. Um, so we're going to, we're working with our web designer, Ivan Dockery, he's going to pretty much like, we're going to just do a different, a new site, so it will look totally different. Okay. We'll have um, some new artists and um, we're asking, we've asked artists to send a new picture, so we'll have like totally new pictures, yeah. portfolio from most of the artists that are on the site. And, you know, hey, some people have moved, so they're not in the Bronx anymore, so they won't be on the site anymore, you know. We're also um, doing more um, original content. So, um, you know, <laughs> one of the best things that we've done is to, you know, work with you, Zach, you know, um, our new communications manager. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> so, you know, Zach, you know, I hate to say this because, you know, I'm not that old, but it's so good to work with young people, you know, especially who um, understand how to use these different social media platforms and to take advantage of these types of things. So I was really happy to bring you on board to, um, you know, to expand what we're doing, because really, you know, I, w I want to be able to show the wealth of talent here. And, and it's actually not that hard to do, you know, it's just, you know, a few people working together and to, you know, to make it happen, you know, and to do a good job at it, to be mindful about, you know, doing our best with it, you know, not just like throwing things at the wall and see what sticks. So, you know, it's good to be working with you in particular to um, do more content. You know, we're going to have web galleries and you know, but we'd like to do more um, interviews with artists and things like this to really, you know, show what's going on. Yes. Oh, thanks, Laura. I, I really enjoy working with you, too. And I'm excited for the, the stuff that's coming up because I think it's a great initiative. Like, 200 is, is pretty dope. And we need okay. to, you know, celebrate more of our local artists. So that's why <laughs> I'm excited. Um, what about you? What are some other art projects that you're currently working on? Um. Well, right now I'm actually, I'm making a, I was commissioned to make a crucifix for a, the sem a seminary, um, actually, yeah, well, it's a liberal arts college, a private liberal arts college, University of the South in, in Sewanee, Tennessee, oh. and they have, um, they, they, they have this beautiful chapel, they have many chapels on their campus, but there was this one in particular where you know, they had their Italian Jesus on the cross, you know, for many, many years. And it's like a pretty long story. But, you know, a few of the students, they were like, hey, you know, you know, maybe we could do have a different kind of Jesus there now for the next 200 years, you know. Right. So, we, yeah, it, there was a, a it, it, the, 
you know, they were planning this over many years, a lot of different moving parts or what have you, but they they commissioned me to make a, a, a crucifix shaped in the in the shape of an Ethiopian cross. And um you know, so it will replace this this crucifix that was in their in their chapel. And one of the most interesting things to me about this whole project is that this school in Tennessee was actually founded by um, slave traders. You know, so wow. the, the, this man who was like he was a partner in a, the biggest slave trading firm in in America in the eighteen hundred eighteen fifties. You know, um, he gave money. To, start this, to um to buy the land to start the school because they and it's an episcopalian um you know uh college they didn't want to be under the thumb of the northerners which i guess were against slavery you know but anyway it's just to you know just goes to show how things are changing and how how people can make decisions to make things change you know to to um to move humanity forward so i'm really pleased to be working on that project i'm also working with a catholic group a progressive catholic group who um are re-imaging mary magdalene mary magdalene's um story i guess you know to be reflective of the true story that's in the actual bible and not what other people said about her afterwards so i'm making a series of four paintings based on you know her role as it is in the bible so you know, another thing with sort of retelling, you know, a story that has sort of gotten muddied as the time goes on because of certain people and what they wanted to, you know, put forward. I'm also working on, you know, besides some other commissions, I work mostly on commission, which is, which is nice because, you know, it's like, you know, you, hey, exactly. <laughs> You, you're not trying to sell it it's sold you know what i'm saying and that's important when this is something you know this is like what i do full time this is like my job but um you know so i have other commissions but besides that i have this project that i've been working on that is just like a labor of love at this point um it's called race and reparations and basically it's going to be a series of 10 paintings based on like the why we should have reparations you know not how because i don't know and that's not my that's not my issue but why you know because of, there are a lot of people who are sort of stumped by this question don't ask me why but they're like hmm why do we need reparations so yeah i'm trying to i'm fixing to tell you in 10 paintings you know and, and this is something that i like to do just like to make a picture when you look at it it looks kind of pretty but then when you look a little closer you're like oh hmm you know and so i started to do that and it's 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 been pretty you know i'm i'm happy to get it off my chest you know because like there's so much injustice and just all kinds of bs that you see and it's like you know you you got to you got to see the truth people you know it's like this is not this is not we're not making this shit up you know what i mean it's like there's history here it is deal with it you know deal with so that. i'm trying to do with my art and and with that project so those are a few things that I'm working on right now. Yes, power to you on those projects. It is a Thank lot. You. Yeah, it's all, and that's why I have to go outside to the to the community garden and to the park every once in a while to the river because you know painting lynching scenes is not like fun. You know what I mean? But it is something that I feel that needs to be done. So, absolutely, I love it. I like the historical bend. It sounds like it's almost like um, an update in a way of your paintings your previous paintings about slavery. Mm -hmm. That's almost like yeah. a yeah. or a continuation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I, you know, those paintings I did early on, they were, it was a part of a series called American History, which is exactly what this is too, you know, it's just like American history. But, you know, it's like, it's so funny because I was painting one of these paintings earlier this week and watching um, Henry Louis Gates, Finding Your Roots, you know, yeah. on Channel and PBS, I've just like been binge watching it. And it's just so terribly interesting, you know, the history of the people in this country, you know, you and I and, and everybody else. And just how, you know, you just, you know, when, when he finds somebody's great, great grandmother or something, it's like, oh, my God, you know, they don't know her name. They didn't know where she came from. And that wasn't even that long ago, you know, and I don't know who my great, great grandparents are either. Like, I know my I knew my grandparents, but that was it, you know, and it's it's just so interesting how we don't even we, we don't even know, you know, so few people. 
know their people. <laughs> you know, it's it's very right. curious. But um, you know, they're out there, and they they did make us who we are. You know, so anyway, I digress. I don't know what I'm talking about now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, I led you down another path, but yeah, important work, and I we appreciate you making that and bringing that information to light because we it's something we do need to be talking about for sure. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so we're basically at the end of our talk. I wanted to ask you one last question, which is, do you have any advice for artists who are following after you? you yeah, advice for artists. You know, I mean, hey, it's advice for artists, it's advice for my kids and for everybody else. I I think everybody should be nice, you know, be nice. It's like, it's not that hard, you know, and you also, people will like you more. I, I don't know how else to put it, like, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's art or anything else. And, you know, with art, there are so many artists. I don't know how else to put it. There are just so many artists, you know, at, at all levels. And one thing that can really distinguish you is if you're respectful and you're like a nice person, you know what I mean? Nobody wants to deal with attitude, <laughs> you know, it's like, take the attitude home, but, you know, try to just be, you know, be respectful, being, be nice, you know, I don't know, I don't know how else to say it, you know, and, you know, also just like keep learning stuff, you know, don't be like, oh, I know what I'm doing. And then you do the same thing for the next hundred years. I mean, you can, I guess, but there's so many things to learn, you know, different um, themes and different topics and subjects and, you know, different kinds of ways you can do things, you know, and also to just like to go out, you know, go outside, go get out of the studio, go, you know, turn off the TV, like go outside, see some art somewhere, you know, you know, different things like that. There's, this is New York for crying out loud, you know, and even just with the internet, you know, there's some, there's just so much to see. So, you know, don't kind of feel like you kind of know it all, you know, it's like nobody knows it all. You know, there's always more for us to learn. So just, you yeah. know, take advantage of that, you know, and also, you know, just like, you know, trying to collaborate with people and mm -hmm. work with people, you know, and, you know, you know, getting ideas from people. It's, yeah. it's good. You know, we don't always have to be, like, so in our own space, you know? It's, like, good right. to get out and to um, to work with other people, you know? People are cool. <laughs> you know, you'll find some cool ones out there, you know? It's not, maybe not everybody, but, you know, it's a, it's a good thing when you can um, when you can collaborate. Absolutely. At, so those are some things that I would say. Yes, thank you. I'm a big fan of collaboration, too. Yeah, it's good much need especially now when we're so distant from each other and mm -hmm. also what you said about going outside i mean it sounds like such a simple thing but i mean go outside <laughs> go outside take a walk yeah. take if you take have to walk. take your laptop <laughs> if you have to go to the cafe but just go outside mm -hmm. sometimes people don't stay outside. yeah i think that now you know after the, after now that we're being able we're able to go out more often i think more people can appreciate that you know it's like oh my god i want to i really want to go outside now you know yeah. so you know you're going to look at the world a little differently i mean at least i have you know i'm having been inside for so long and then really being able to go out and travel a little bit more you know you you appreciate it just that much more so right absolutely cool well, um, this is, we're here at the end. I yeah. see. Oh, okay. Somebody had requested to join. Um, so I just wanted to close out by saying if anybody, um, we're going to be doing these talks more often. Yes. Yes. So um, we would, we're going to be, you know, interviewing artists, artists to our 200 website. Um, if you, viewers have anybody that you would like to hear from from our website or if you know any bronx artists or organizations that maybe we can highlight let us know you can email us at contact at vx200.com or you can yes. DM us. And we never even mentioned it but if you want to look at the website oh, you know okay. 200.com pretty simple to remember yes. and also my website is laurajamesart.com yes uh, that's simple to yeah that's it so um, okay so I, I always call, i always want to call you zachary since i've known you forever but zach 
Yeah, that's me. Thank you, Zach. That was that was great. I I appreciate it. No worries. And thanks everybody for coming through. Yes, thank you for joining us. Yes. All righty. Have a great day. Okay. See you later. <laughs> Bye.